This week I'm doing another diet review and this time it's OMAD or one meal a day. First of all, changing the time when you eat or the time window when you eat alone does not make you lose or gain weight. It's all about calories in versus calories out. One week later. Oh my God. For this week, I'm only going to be eating one meal per day and that's going to be within a one hour time frame. I'm also going to track my calories and make sure I hit 2000 calories a day. This being the standard advice of how many calories a typical person should eat. I'm curious about how OMAD will make me feel throughout the week, but I also want to test out what my maintenance calories are. So with that being said, let's get into day one. This is day one meal. I was gonna say day one dinner, but uh, I only get one meal. So I've got three lamb chops, some various roasted veggies, one tortilla, about 100 grams of a yogurt dip, as well as for dessert, I have this very high calorie protein packed chia pudding. And then as an extra little treat, I've got 300 milliliters of wine, which I'm not gonna spill. That's a lot of calories, but I say it's worth it. That's it. Just a real quick update. I finished the majority of my dinner, which was like, I feel like not that much volume and I would normally eat that for just a dinner. But this is the real, the real calorie bomb, this chia pudding that I've made. I'm working through it, I will get through it. And then I've still got the majority of my wine left as well. So minus the chia pudding and the wine, it would have been like a normal meal and I'm, I'm quite full, but I will continue with this. Now, let's just talk about this chia pudding snack. I feel like I could make a whole video about these diet foods. While some of them can be really good and nutrient dense, there's also the possibility that some of these, like nuts and seeds, are also really high in calories for a relatively small volume. I'm not saying to fully avoid these foods by any means, but if you're trying to lose weight, it's important to actually track your calories and actually look at what you're eating because you might inadvertently be adding more calories than you realize. Okay, this is my day two. I have a tuna wrap with lots of tomatoes, cheese, and olive paste, and a side of orange and banana. But wait, that's not all. Because I also have three eggs, two pieces of toast cooked in butter. Well, the eggs cooked in butter, not the toast. 2,000 calories. So this is my day two meal. Quite a bit of volume, but all sort of normal foods that I would eat on a normal day. I am pretty much done, but I am just so incredibly full. I ate the eggs, I ate the, um, the tuna wrap. I've got the tiniest bit of cheese left, which I put on some bread, and I'm just, it's, it's so filling with the cheese. I don't think I'll give myself this much cheese in the future. It's just too much, and I feel like I'm sweating because I'm eating so much. Um, and I haven't even touched, I haven't even touched my fruit yet. And I don't know, I've been sitting here for like 30 minutes now and I'm, I'm gonna get through it. I'm just, I'm beyond full. That's the end of that. I'm so glad I've already worked out because I am so stuffed. I still have to finish my fruit. I could just go take a nap, but I've got eight hours of work ahead of me, so oh, I think I'm just gonna like work laying down because I just feel so uncomfortable. I don't think this OMAD is for me. I don't think I could ever get used to this. If I'm gonna try to fit 2000 calories in one, in one sitting, it's just, it's not a fun time for me. One of the things I noticed early on with OMAD is a potential conflict with scheduling. So how are you supposed to plan your meals? Should you have your meal first thing in the morning, right when you get back from work or right before you go to bed? And I think the answer really varies depending on the person. For me, it works best after my workout and before I start work because I work 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. So if you work the typical nine to five, I could see it making more sense if you wait until after your work or after your workout to have your meal. But I could see many instances where this just might not work at all for somebody's schedule. Say if you're working shift work or your schedule changes a lot, it would be a much more difficult to plan your one meal a day.
So today is day three and I'm feeling pretty good. I'm not actually too hungry, but I wanna get my meal in before I start work. Overall, I've been going through periods of like super hungry to like super full and that just hasn't been comfortable for me at all. Back when I did the My 600 Pound Life diet plan, I actually found that easier. So eating like small meals throughout the day was easier than eating one big meal in the day. That's just my personal opinion. Another thing I wanted to mention was yesterday I was trying to sort of replicate foods that I would usually eat and then just put it into one meal to total to my 2,000 calories. Today, I thought I'd try to go for more high calorie or calorie dense foods to make it a little bit easier for me. Um, just because it was really uncomfortable yesterday with the volume of food and it took me a while to get through. I wanted to see whether or not the recommended daily calorie intake of 2000 calories would make me lose, gain, or maintain my weight. This was just for my own curiosity, but I think it's actually a valuable piece of information for you to have. How do you know if you're in a calorie deficit if you don't know your maintenance calories? Now, you don't have to do what I'm doing here to find out your maintenance calories. There are plenty of tools that you can use to estimate your daily calorie intake, but you can also just eat as you normally would, track those calories, and then see whether or not you're losing or gaining weight and adjust from there. So for today, I have an orange. I know I just said I was gonna do um, calorie dense, but I really like oranges and we had some good looking oranges, so I've got one orange, I've got um, some chocolate here. This is half of a chocolate bar. It's a really good looking one. It's like a baklava. I don't know how to say that properly, but you know that, that Turkish delicious dessert. That in chocolate form, so I've got that. As well as I've got this egg wrap with homemade mayo, which doesn't make it healthier, it just makes it tastier. Um, some dill, tomatoes, peppers, and then just because I wanted it, um, I've got some veggies in a yogurt dip there as well. And then just about done cooking, I've got rice, tuna pasta, which I'll show you in a second. This is not the prettiest looking thing, but it is tasty. It's rice with pesto, tuna, and some cheese. So this is a nice protein packed, high calorie little, little, it's quite large, but. Okay, so there is day three. I've got my tuna and rice with pesto, a egg salad wrap with tomatoes and homemade mayo, a yogurt dip, an orange, and some lovely chocolate there. That is all 2,000 calories. I really thought today was gonna be easier, but I'm so full already, and I've still got quite a bit of this stupid Rice is good, I like it normally, but like I'm just so full, I don't want it. And then I haven't even touched my orange or the chocolate, which I know I'm just gonna feel sick after that chocolate. I might give up on that, I don't know. <sighs> if you want to hate food, you should try OMAD. And when I said that, I really felt it. If you're not tracking your calories and you're just eating till you're full, then I could see how OMAD could work to be in a calorie deficit. But if you're trying to hit 2000 calories or what I thought my maintenance calories would be, then this is gonna be a little bit more difficult for you. Today is day four and I think I've finally figured things out. Initially, I was a bit confused why this diet would ever be a thing. Going into this, I didn't wanna watch anybody else's attempt or review of OMAD because I didn't want my own opinion to be swayed and I didn't wanna introduce any sort of bias. I know this isn't a scientific experiment or anything, but just for my own benefit, I just want my own raw opinion without anybody else's influence on it. After my meal yesterday, I was feeling uncomfortable for a good five or six hours and then just not hungry whatsoever. Currently now it's almost 2.30 and I'm still not hungry. I can understand how somebody might want to go on this diet if they don't like tracking calories. 
If you're eating real foods, it's very hard to get up to 2000 calories. So I think it would be relatively easy to maintain a calorie deficit if you're only eating one meal because it would be very difficult to even maintain the 2000 calories. Now for my own sake, I want to continue trying to get the full 2000 calories per meal in because one of the other things I want to test is whether or not my maintenance calories is at or around 2000 calories. Now, because of how I decided to do OMAD, I started noticing some other potential problems. Like I said, I still wanted to get 2000 calories in per day, but I'm the type of person that really likes to eat their fruit and veg. However, these foods are very low calorie and very high volume. So I found it very difficult to fit in fruit and veg when I'm trying to get 2000 calories in, in one meal. So it felt like OMAD was almost pushing me or encouraging me to eat these high calorie or calorie dense foods. And I feel like in the long term, that could be limiting the amount of nutrients that you can get from things like fruit and veg. So I could see this being beneficial if you're looking just to be in a calorie deficit for a short term. But so far, I don't see how this could work for most people long term because it's hard to get those maintenance calories in. And so today to help my meal get up to 2000 calories with relatively low volume, because I just don't want to be that uncomfortable again, I've got my good friend Nutella here. Okay, so there is plate one, just a whole bunch of <laughs> chocolate swirls in tortilla and the rest of that same chocolate bar minus a couple squares that I think my, my boyfriend may have taken. <laughs> and then to round things out to 2000 calories, I have some fried halloumi there. It's sort of similar to like a cheese curd that's fried. And then I also have my um, wrap here, which is an egg salad wrap with homemade mayo. And as a side note, if you're on a calorie deficit or you want to be losing weight, do not learn how to make homemade mayo because it is so delicious and so high calorie, but it's so good. And then just to sort of have a palate cleanser, I also have some uh, yogurt dip with veggies, hashtag health. That was so easy. I hardly even broke a sweat. That was so much easier than previous meals. So just a little update. It's been about six or seven hours and I think my plan for eating low volume, high calorie foods backfired a little bit on me because I'm already hungry. I'm honestly a bit shocked because that was so many calories and I'm just hungry again so quickly after oh so i think that just goes to show something like chocolate spread just is not really the greatest at filling you up so i'm gonna finish up work go to bed and tomorrow i'm gonna try to get some fatty meats maybe some chicken wings or lamb again last time i had lamb that was really satiating and it wasn't that difficult to get 2000 calories so i think um, that's probably the best route going forward. So for day five, I am fortunate enough to be able to have a meat like this for a second time this week. So that is some lamb as well as some grilled uh, bell pepper and tomato and some rice as well as I have a side of dried apricots and banana just because this wasn't quite 2000 calories. I've also got this chocolate, which is the absolute best. That is this strawberry Milka chocolate. It is so delicious right there. So this is my total meal for 2000 calories. Here we go. So today I have some chicken wings. And when I say some, I mean 400 grams of, here's my, my hand for comparison. There's like a lot of chicken wings. Um, as well as some tomatoes and cheese because I like tomatoes and I like it with cheese um, as well as some leftover rice with pesto and some dried uh, What are these dried apricots? They're quite tasty and then I have this treat that I've never tried this before. This is like a I have the package here. It's like a little strawberry Chocolate doodad. So we'll see how that is. So there is my meal number six. It doesn't look too voluminous and I don't think it'll be too, too difficult. So the day's about over, it's about 10.30. I'm almost done with work. Um, I've just been busy working all day and somehow after that massive meal, 
I'm hungry again. So I just don't think one meal a day is working personally for me. Throughout this experience, I've been feeling very full after each meal. And this would persist for several hours of being uncomfortably full. But then at the end, I'm still hungry again and I'm not able to have an extra snack or anything like that. So with this OMAD diet, you still need to have quite a great deal of discipline. And because of the way I'm going from extremely full to extremely hungry, I don't see this being good even if you're trying to be in a calorie deficit. Several weeks ago when I tried the 2000 calorie a day, I think that was actually an easier method, at least for me, to be in a calorie deficit. I was able to have snacks here and there. I was able to have vegetables. It really encouraged me to have those lower calorie, high volume foods. And generally, I just felt more comfortable throughout the day. However, I would recommend upping the calories a little bit from what I did in that video. So day seven, last day, I was out all day running around doing stuff, so I'm eating fairly late. It's almost 8 p.m. now. Um, but for my last meal of this little challenge, I have this delicious looking sandwich that I made with cheese, tomato, and uh, black olive paste, as well as some assorted dried fruit. There's uh, prunes, dried apricots, and I'm not sure what these things are, but they're quite tasty. It's almost like a sour plum. And then I've also got sujukve yumorta, which is um, sausage and egg. Um, and the sausage really helped to hike up the calories for that. And then just topping it off with a little bit of wine. Okay, this is March 3rd, starting weight. And this is with clothes and camera, which added about one kilo. It was 63.3 just a few minutes ago before I got dressed and grabbed the camera. There we go. Okay, so this is one week later on March 10th, wearing the same or similar clothes. So yes, in the end, I did end up losing one kilogram, but I don't think this was because of OMAD itself. The main reason I lost a kilogram is because 2000 calories is less than my maintenance calories. I'm a pretty big girl. I'm five foot nine or about 175 centimeters. I work out, so I have, you know, a decent amount of muscle on me. And apparently I just need more than 2000 calories to sustain my size. So overall, would I recommend OMAD? For most people, if you're looking to lose weight or be in a calorie deficit, I don't think this is great. However, I do see one really good thing coming from OMAD. If you're the type of person who snacks a lot, or you feel like you just can't go from one meal to the next without having snacks in between, I think this is a good tool to use for a short amount of time to teach yourself that discipline. Yes, it's hard, but it does get easier over time. In just one week, I really wasn't able to adjust to the OMAD lifestyle. So it could just be that it maybe takes a little bit longer to get adjusted to this way of eating. Personally, because of the limitations with time and just how it made me feel, I don't see this working well for me. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much if you made it this far and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Damn.